Alrighty, in this video we're going to do a very quick, concise rundown on how to remove your spring plates, adjust your spring plates, notch your spring plates if you need to, and then reinstall them if you're planning on lowering the back of your Beetle, Carmen Ghia, bus, whatever. The procedure is basically the same. So we're going to go over the tools you're going to need really quick, and this is going to be basically the same for most of the cars. There are a couple of different configurations of the spring plates depending on the year of the car. This is a 62, so we have this short style spring plate cap with the short snout, and this is like 61 to 68, I think. The IRS cars, some of them had the longer snout. The earlier cars, they had the longer snout as well. But like I said, the procedure is basically the same. So we're going to need a ratchet, 15 millimeter, to get our torsion cap off. We're going to need a pry bar or a big, just a big screwdriver to get our spring plate off of the perch. We're gonna need a hammer to help us get this spring plate off as well. And then we're gonna need some type of marking devices, Sharpies, whatever, and some sort of angle finder so we can adjust the angle of the spring plate. Either one of these styles will work. I've used them both. You can also do it just with a marker. If you don't have an angle finder, you can still make it happen. So as you can see, this car has the transaxle out of it currently. If your car still has the transaxle in it, you can still do that. You do not have to remove the transaxle or anything to adjust the, to remove these or adjust these, but you will have to take the spring plate completely loose from the swing axle. So all three of your swing axle bolts, you'll need to undo the parking brake cable so you can pull the axle back far enough to clear the spring plate. And that's basically it. Otherwise, the procedure is going to be the same whether the transmission's in the car or out. And if you need a step-by-step -step on how to remove your transaxle, I'll have a video for that as well. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to remove our torsion cap. So we just got four 15 millimeter bolts here. This cap will pull off. And sometimes these front two can be a little tricky to get onto, um, but just a ratchet and a socket will pull these out pretty easily. Okay, so we got the four bolts off of our cap, and a lot of times these are kind of stuck on here with the bushing and everything. So you may have to get your screwdriver and kind of pry these off a little bit. And this one's stuck on the, the crust on the inside of my fender well here. So pull your cap off. You can pull this bushing off as well. If you're gonna reuse this, save it. And now we can see our splines on the end of our torsion spring where it goes into our spring plate. So this is where we're gonna be doing our adjustment. This is where you will hear people talking about lowering their car one click or two clicks or one notch or two notches and that's referencing these notches on our spring plate end right here where it goes onto the torsion spring. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure this is wiped off really well so I can put a reference line on here so I know where my starting point is in case, you know, this sits off for any length of time and I kind of forget. We will always have a mark where we can go back and reference where this was in its original position. Also, in most cases, you're not going to want to take the torsion spring out of the car. You're just going to leave it in. So when we take this off, you're going to have to be kind of mindful that we don't pull the spring out of its inner seat. We just want to get the spring plate off of the torsion bar. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to put us a reference line on here. So what I'm going to try to do is just draw a line on our spring and then down on to one of these notches on my spring plate. That way I have a good solid reference point and I can see where this started no matter where we end up through this procedure. And then a lot of times I'll also go ahead and put a line just above the spring plate right here on the torsion casting. That way I can see, you know, exactly where this landed, especially if you don't have an angle finder or anything to reference this original angle, that will always give you a reference point from where you started. So at this point, we could also use either one of our angle finders to establish our baseline reference point. So like down here, we can see that this is right about three degrees and I've got this angle finder just zeroed out on our start point. So that'll give you another reference to your starting point as well. But in most instances, we're only going to be concerned with these outer splines and typically we can see these. So if you have this style spring plate, you'll be able to easily see the splines and the notches that we're talking about. If you have the earlier long snout style, you're not going to be able to see those splines. So having those angles as a reference is going to be really helpful. So we want to have kind of an idea of what we're going to do before we go pull our spring plate off. So in this case, I'm sending these off as cores uh, for a set of notched 
adjustable extended spring plates because we're going to be lowering this car a good bit uh, but if you're only planning on lowering your car like one notch there's no reason you can't use the original spring plates okay so now at this point we're ready to remove the spring plate and this is where a lot of people will get kind of anxious because they've gotten on the samba and they've read a bunch of middle-aged dudes that don't know what they're talking about and never actually done this and they'll get terrified of this because they think there's a ton of tension on the spring and yes there is some preload tension on the spring plate but it's not enough where this is going to pop off and spin around and chop through the body and i've literally read that comment on the thread on the samba it's not going to do that when you pry this off it's just going to clunk down and that's it it's not going to be exciting nothing's going to happen so just get your pry bar and typically you can just wedge it right here underneath the edge of the spring plate now if you go prying on this just right off the bat a lot of times it will pull the entire spring plate and the torsion rod out so what i like to do is get my pry bar under here and then get my hammer and just kind of tap just tap on the torsion rod as it lifts off of that perch and you can see it literally just pops right off of there it's not a big deal now but like i but now, like I said, we don't want to disengage the inner splines on our torsion rod. So you want to make sure that you're tapping this rod inwards as you're pulling the spring plate off so that we don't lose our engagement on those inner splines. Okay, so there we go, we got our spring plates off. If you're gonna replace these bushings or reuse these bushings, save them, set them aside. And you can see our torsion rod stayed right in place where we wanted it. Just keep a little bit of inward pressure on that as you're working this spring plate off and it'll stay right where we want it. Okay, so now that our spring plate's off, we can put it back on and we can make our adjustments to lower the car. So like I said before, we're gonna be referencing these splines on the end of our torsion rod. And that's what you'll hear people talking about. It's like one spline, two splines or three splines and most and in most cases you're going to be making your adjustments on these outer splines you can adjust the inner splines but if you've never done it before it can be really challenging because you're doing it by feel you pull this out you turn it and hope that you land on the right notches and there's charts on the samba and on the internet where you can get and reference different exact heights depending on a combination of inner and outer splines but in this, day, in this day and age, that's way too complicated. If you need to be making some fine-tuned adjustments on your suspension height, get a set of adjustable spring plates. It makes everything so much easier. But in this case, we're just gonna throw this back on here. I'm gonna show you what one spline looks like. I'm gonna show you what two splines look like and then three splines. So one spline is kind of a moderate drop. Two splines is pretty low. Three splines is ridiculous. Okay, so in most cases, most people are just gonna go one spline. So what we'll do is we'll just spin this back to where we get to our reference point, where we can see our line. So I can see my line on my spring plate. I can see my line on my torsion rod. And then I'm just gonna kind of do this by feel and by looking at it. And I'm just gonna go up one spline until I feel this thing start to seat back on there. And then I can look down in here, find my reference mark, and see that I'm up one notch or one spline and it'll kind of seat back on there. So we are lowered one spline right now. And as you can see, we just need a little bit of preload on this spring plate to get it back up onto our perch here. So what you can do is just kind of press upward on the end of your spring plate and then tap in with this end and it will seat back up onto that notch. Now, I don't have my bushings in here just so we can get this on and off easily, but when your bushings are in place and you tap this spring plate all the way back onto your torsion rod, it will stay in place. So like I said, one spline will be almost no preload and it'll sit right on our bottom notch right here. So then if we're going to go even lower, we can slide this back out. We can slide this back out and we can go up 
one more spline. So see now that we're at two splines, we're a good bit above our stop right here. And we're also a good bit above our reference line where we started. So you can see all this is doing is changing the preload and the angle that this spring plate sits at. So like I said, lowered two splines is gonna put the car pretty low. And as you can see, if you're using your stock spring plates, what was, what's gonna happen is the top of this spring plate, once the car is weighted, the top of this spring plate is gonna hit the top of our torsion casting right here. So what most people will do is they will notch out this spring plate so that you get a little bit more travel without bottoming at our suspension. And I'm just gonna kind of sketch this on here so you can see what a typical notch would look like. And if you look at pictures online, People will have all kinds of different notches and a lot of people notch this way more than it needs to be. But basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna come up here to the front of your spring plate, you're gonna run straight back at a pretty shallow angle. And then once you get past your stop right here, you can angle it up like this. So this is all we're gonna do. So we're gonna come in here and we would cut this section out. And you can do this with a grinder. You know, it only takes a few minutes. This isn't spring steel, it isn't anything crazy. It's just regular steel, you can cut it, you can weld on it, it's not gonna cause any problems. And I'll show you how to do this here in a few minutes. So then just for giggles, we're gonna set this up one more spline to three splines. And you can see that is just absurd right there. And we would have to notch this significantly. Now, I've driven cars, you know, lowered three splines. And when you get to this point, this is where you're you're ruining axles, you're ruining the fulcrum plates in your, in your spider gears. Like, you know, this does a lot of damage. So without doing a transmission raise, you know, you can't realistically drive around at this height. You know, this, if you're trying to be this low, get some air ride. Okay, so I've got both of my spring plates off now and I'm gonna show you real quick the correct way to notch these. And you know, people will say, oh, it's not correct to notch them, you know, because you're, you're cutting into your spring plate, you're compromising it, whatever. If you wanna ride low and have suspension travel, you have to put a notch in them. And people will say this is dangerous and you shouldn't do this, whatever. I put tens of thousands of miles on lower beetles with notch spring plates, no big deal. There's a million people out there doing the same thing. Now, if you're attempting to raise the car and you notch the bottom of your spring plate, yes, that can be very dangerous because now you're putting that notch under constant tension as the suspension moves. And I have seen those break, but I have never personally seen a lowered notch spring plate break. Um, so I've drawn this on here with a silver Sharpie so you, hopefully you can see this a little bit better. But like I said, you know, we don't need a huge notch. We just doesn't need to go halfway through our spring plate. It doesn't need to go all the way to the back of our spring plate. We just need to come back a little bit and then we can come up. The number one thing when you're notching your spring plates though, is this corner right here where our cuts meet up. We want this corner to be a radius. We do not want a sharp corner where these meet because then stress can concentrate in that corner and these can crack from there. So most of the time when I'll do this, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole right here in my corner and then you can cut to that hole and that makes and that puts a really nice radius in there that we don't have to worry about. Okay, so you can see, just took a few minutes. I just took, punched a hole, drilled my hole, took my cutoff wheel, cut my notch out, took my flat disc, cleaned it up, made sure all my little corners are rounded over, make sure we get a little chamfer on our edge here so there's no sharp edges that are gonna cut us when we put these back on. So these are ready to go. We could clean these up, paint them, whatever. They're ready to go back on the car. Also, keep in mind, these, your spring plates aren't particular to one side or the other. So if they get mixed up, that's no big deal. However, when you're doing your notches, you want to make sure that your notch is oriented to the top side of the spring plate on both sides. That way you don't lay these out next to each other, notch them on the same side, and then you go to put one on and all of a sudden your notch is upside down. So make sure you're paying attention to your notch when you're laying them out before you cut them. If you need to lay them out and then go check them on the car, do that before you cut them. Okay, now, so with all this being said, this is definitely kind of the old school budget way of doing this at this point. There are a lot of better options this day and age. But back in the day, when I first started getting into this, you couldn't buy 
extended spring plates. You couldn't buy drop spring plates. There weren't, you know, all these aftermarket options for these. So if you're on a budget, if you're on a time crunch, this is absolutely a still a viable option. However, if you want some more fine tunability with your suspension, you can get notched spring plates, you can get dropped spring plates, you can get adjustable spring plates, or what I'm gonna do, I'm again gonna get all of them. So I'm gonna hit up my buddy Sam at Auto Work Suspension. He is absolutely the man on any of your air-cooled suspension needs. And I'm gonna send these cores off to him, and he's gonna build me a brand new set of spring plates that are notched, that are extended for our lowered ride height, and that are adjustable so we can really get a good fine tune on it. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions on this, leave them in the comments. If you have any other suspension questions, leave them in the comments as well. We're gonna be building the entire suspension on my new 62 Ragtop Beetle. If you haven't seen the video on that, go check it out. Thanks for watching, see you next time.